9 and 10. This is Mr. Devlin uh, here with your third online uh, physics lesson um, from the lockdown lessons provided by St. Leonard's Academy. Uh, so your first lesson was with Miss uh, Page on motion. The second lesson uh, we did last week was on an introduction to radioactivity. Whilst I was doing that lesson, I realized I thought that there were some real fundamental key skills in physics that we could really do with going over before we move on to um, higher level stuff. So that's why this lesson uh, or this week I've chosen to go back to key skills. Um, these are real fundamentals that you will need for both papers, papers uh, one and two for physics and throughout your life. So that's why I think it's important we do them. We're going to do another lesson on key skills next week and the week after uh, I'm planning to resume uh, going over our radioactivity scheme. Okay, so um, what are we doing today? We're looking at um, SI units, Systeme International, we'll find out what those are, and we're looking at standard form. Uh, what is it? Um, and why do scientists use it and mathematicians? I think it's going to take you about an hour to complete. If you're fast or you've done this before, then it may take you significantly less time. But I do think it's worth us to take the time to go over this. The equipment that you'll need uh, is a pen, some paper, and ideally a scientific calculator. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can use the calculator on your smartphone or you can also use a non-scientific calculator. But ideally, you should have a scientific calculator because we will be using um, powers of 10 or exponents, which is difficult to do on an ordinary calculator. Um, and also, ideally, if you have a, uh, a quiet, clear workspace that will help you to focus for the whole hour. Okay. So just quickly to go over before we get stuck in, uh, I did this last week, uh, maybe this is the last week I'll go over it. Um, work expectations from St. Leonard's Academy Science Department over the COVID lockdown. We'd like you to try to complete three hours of science work per week. And that can be in the revision booklets we've given you. It can be online lessons such as this one, or it can be your own work, for example, using BBC Bite Size or Oak National Academy or any other resource that you find and you enjoy using. Okay, so key skills, units. Have a look at the pictures. What do you see? How might this relate to units? So what I see is a digital clock uh, which is labelled in days, hours, minutes and seconds. So these are different units for time, the quantity time. Two hours is the same as 120 minutes. They are the same length of time, but two different units. We've got a, uh, an old fashioned looking uh, speedometer for a car, which is labelled in miles per hour around the outside how many miles you travel in each hour, and kilometers per hour in red on the inner ring. So if you're traveling at 60 miles per hour, you're traveling at 100 kilometers per hour. Those are two different units for speed. Here we have a running watch, um, and someone's looking back over their last run. You can see you've got distance, you've got a time, you've got a pace, and you've got how many calories they've burned. So different units for different quantities. Okay, let's get start, stuck right in with some questions, see how much you remember. Uh, I'd like you to, uh, for the do it now, try to answer these questions, true or false. Uh, your one, your age in seconds is the same as your age in years. What, two, a kilo, one kilometer is larger than one meter. Three, a meter is a unit for length. Four, five miles is shorter than nine kilometers. Five, the unit for pressure is the Newton. And as an extension, if you're a higher or a triple student, can you explain each true or false answer? And two, what do you think the units are on the running watch opposite? What are the units? Not the quantity, but the unit, okay? And you have to figure it out for time because the unit is not given to you there. Okay, if you like, you can pause the 
um, lesson and try to answer those questions. Pause it now. Okay, um, so let's have a look at the answers. True, your age in seconds is the same as your age in years. True, 14 years, for example, is exactly the same amount of time as 441,500,000 seconds. They are the same length of time. Uh, number two, true, one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters, so one kilometer is larger than one meter. Three, uh, a meter is a unit for length, it is, of course. Number four, true, five miles is equal to 8.1 kilometers to two significant figures. Um, so five miles is shorter than nine kilometers, it is, it's 8.1 kilometers. And question five was false, the unit for pressure is the Pascal. Don't worry if you didn't know them, um, but if you did, well done. Give yourself a pat on the back. And for our extension questions, uh, I've just given you the explanations. And for question two, the distance on the watch was in miles. The time, the unit for the time, was in minutes and seconds. Or if you just wrote minutes, that's fine as well. You had to figure that out um, because you could see the distance and you could see their pace. It, you could think if it was hours, would it be reasonable for someone to run um, three miles, I think it was, in in 20 hours, 20 seconds, um, unlikely. So the time is minutes and seconds. The pace was in minutes and seconds per mile. Pace is uh, a unit for, for speed, um, whereas per mile is the inverse of speed. So instead of miles per hour, it's minutes per mile or seconds. Per mile. And the unit for calories, that was a little c, it's just calories. Okay, lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, and you can go back to this slide to check that you've gone over uh, and you understand uh, and you can do these things because I've lifted these from the specification points for physics GCSE. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to recall and use the SI base unit for physical quantities including um, meters, kilograms, seconds, amps, kelvin, and moles. And you should be able to use standard form where appropriate. Okay, what do all of these have in common? I would like you, when, when I say, to pause the video and to try to answer what all of these have in common. You can also Try to do the purple question at the side here, sort them into groups. Okay, you can pause the video now. And hopefully now you've unpaused it and you're not cheating uh, by not pausing and just getting me to tell you the answer. If you are doing that, then that completely defeats the part, point of doing the questions. I would like you to attempt um, questions yourself uh, when we go through. Okay, so what do they all have in common? Uh, obviously, in the classroom, we would get some uh, some hands up, but uh, we can't do that in this format. So I'm just going to have to tell you they're all units: uh, kilometer uh, and feet and millimeters and inches and centimeters are all units of length, telling us how long something is. Pounds is a unit for mass. Watts, amps kilowatts and megavolts are all units with something to do with electricity. Watts can also be to do with mechanical power. Um, lux is a unit for light intensity. So you can see I've got a window open over there and not a window open over there. The light intensity on this side of my face is a lot higher than this side of my face. So I could get a measurement for lux here, which would be higher than here. Okay, so that would be your groups. These are all units. I want to have meters per second here, which is a unit for um, speed or velocity. Okay, so units. What are they? Units are used to define what kind of quantity we are looking at and its size 
or magnitude. Magnitude is just another word for size. So for example, if, uh, so 10 centimeters, centimeters tells you that it's uh, length, centimeters tells you that it's, well, 10 centimeters is quite small. Compared to 10 meters, meters tells you that this quantity would be length as well, so how long something is, but 10 meters is going to be much larger than 10 centimeters. So the unit tells us what quantity, we're, what kind of quantity we're looking at and its magnitude. 10 with a little s after it, s is the symbol for seconds, uh, which shows us it's a time, so 10 seconds. Units are essential in science to know what kind of number, what kind of quantity we're looking at and its magnitude. If you just uh, had a conversation with someone and they said, uh, how long ago um, did you last see your um, friend Billy? And you said, I last saw him 10. It's meaningless. 10 minutes ago, 10 hours ago, 10 days ago, 10 years ago. So the units are fundamental. Units are fundamental for our daily life, for us to make sense of, uh, of numbers in our daily lives. You can see here uh, to the right, we have that old fashioned speedometer of a car. Uh, so this will go up as the car is driving. Uh, the indicator. And what you can see is around the outside, you have the larger numbers in the, in the pale color are miles per hour. So if you're at 70 miles per hour, every hour you travel 70 miles. On the inner scale, you've got a different scale in red labeled kilometers per hour. And if you are at 70 miles per hour, you can see you're going to be at approximately 120, possibly a little bit less, uh, 116 uh, kilometers per hour, for example. So two different units for speed on the same dial. Why might we want this? Because uh, in some places, in some countries like ours, the speed limits are labeled in miles per hour. However, if we were to drive our car to France, then the speed limits will all be in kilometers per hour. So we need to have both measurement systems. We need to have both units on a speedometer of a car which is going to travel between the UK and France. Okay, SI units. Scientists use SI, which stands for Système Internationale. I didn't do that accent very well. It's supposed to be French. I might give it another go. Système Internationale decent, I think. Uh, so it's from French, uh, which means international system, but they put the words a different way around, so système international. The scientists use SI units, which are also known as the metric system. I would like you, so we're going to find out a little bit about the metric system and SI units. Uh, I'd like you, when I say, uh, to type the link below into your browser and watch the video and answer the following questions. So before you type in the link, write down the questions on your paper. Where does the metric system, SI units, come from? And what was the original definition of a meter? If you don't want to type in the link, I've also included the link on the comments of the YouTube video. Okay, you can pause this video to watch the other video and answer the questions now. Okay, so straight back in it, let's go straight through to the answers. If you haven't paused and watched the video, then do that now, okay? I want you to watch that video to answer the questions. I'll give you a very good introduction to units and systems of measurement. The answers were, however, revolutionary France, uh, was where they were first used, the metric, where the metric system and SI units were first used. And the original definition of a meter was one ten millionth, that is one divided by 10 million, of the distance between the North Pole and the equator. 
Now, there are a few units which, unfortunately, we just have to learn. Uh, you will need them for science, both uh, for, for chemistry, biology, and physics. You will also need many of these units uh, in your normal daily life when you uh, go on in life. <laughs> so uh, we've got the unit for length, uh, or the quantity length. The unit is the meter. There's an abbreviation, which we also we have to learn all of these parts. Abbreviation is a small, a lowercase m. The quantity mass, how much mass uh, or stuff there is in something. The unit is the kilogram, small, lowercase kg is the abbreviation. For the quantity time, the unit is the second, symbol, small s, abbreviation, small s. For uh, the quantity of electrical current, the unit is an ampere, or amp, and the abbreviation is uh, capital A. For temperature, it's not degrees centigrade, the unit is Kelvin. The abbreviation is a capital K. And for the amount of a substance, you may have seen this already in chemistry. Um, you will do, you will look at this an awful lot in chemistry. For the amount of a substance, the unit is something called a mole. And the abbreviation is all lowercase M O L. So you you will you just have to learn this table. Um, you may like to uh, make some flashcards uh, after the lesson is finished for helping you to remember these uh, quantities and units and abbreviations if you don't know them already. There are also, but these are the six fundamental units from which all other units can be derived. Those of you who are sharp-eyed will see on the diagram to the left, this SI diagram, uh, there are in fact seven units shown, um, with CD being an abbreviation of the seventh unit. So I'm sorry, there are actually seven fundamental units, but for GCSE level, we only need to worry about these six. If you're a higher or a triple student, you might like to find out what the unit CD stands for, what the abbreviation CD stands for, and what is the um, quantity that CD is the unit for. Unfortunately, again, there are some other things that we just have to learn, other units. Once you have learnt these, it will make all of your um, physics and biology and chemistry so much easier because it will start to make so much more sense. So I really do if you recommend, if you don't know these units, that you um, make some time to learn them. Okay, we've got the unit for frequency is Hertz, the unit for... Um, Force is the Newton. The unit for the quantity energy is a joule. For power is the watt. For pressure is the pascal. For electric charge is a coulomb. For electric potential difference is a volt. For electric resistance is the ohm. And that symbol, that strange looking symbol, is uh, the Greek letter omega. It's a capital omega, is the abbreviation or symbol for the unit ohm, which is the unit of electrical resistance how difficult it is to push electrical charges through a circuit. And then finally, we have a magnetic flux density. Tesla is the unit for magnetic flux density, the abbreviation, capital T. Abbreviation, um, if you haven't seen that word before, just means uh, a shortening of the unit. We do have to learn, we do have to know these unit abbreviations and the units behind them and what quantity they are units for. We just have to learn this information. So don't worry, I do have a task to help us, uh, to help you learn it. Ta-da! What I would like you to do, try to do it as much as you can from memory. Then, when you're stuck, when you can't fill in anymore, you can flick it back to the uh, last two slides uh, that I just had up. What I would like you to do is to copy this table into or onto your piece of paper. You can use a ruler if you like, but no one's checking to see if you do. You can do it as neatly or as not neatly as you wish. Uh, you can do it as quickly as you can. So I've done the first one for you. We've got, the, we've got that same table that we just saw. We have 
what is the quantity, what is the name of the quantity, what is the unit for that quantity, and what is the abbreviation for that unit. So for electrical resistance, the unit is the ohm, and the abbreviation or symbol is the, that strange uh, Greek letter omega. It's a capital omega. For the next one, for force, what is the SI unit for force? And what is the abbreviation for that unit? So, I would like you now to pause this video, not move on, to, uh, because then we will, we will go over the answers afterwards, but I want you to do this, to fill in this table yourself, to try to do it as much as you can from memory, and then go back to the previous slides and flip back and forth so that you can fill in your table yourselves, okay? Pause this video now. If you haven't paused it, pause it now. Okay, I'm going to now assume that you've filled in the table. Let's have a look, see if you are correct. Da -da 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 there we go. Okay, so force, you can see the answer's in green. Force, the unit for force, where is my mouse? There it is. The unit for force is a Newton. The unit for temperature is Kelvin. Sorry, K is uh, the abbreviation for Kelvin, which is a unit for temperature. H is, uh, Hertz is the unit of frequency. It's abbreviated capital H, small z. Amp is the unit for electrical current, abbreviation capital A. Length, the unit is a meter, abbreviation small m, Pascal, pressure, um, Pascal at the PA is the abbreviation for Pascal, which is the unit for pressure, capital W is the unit for watt, capital W, uh, sorry, power is, uh, oh, has the units watts abbreviated to capital W, little s is uh, the abbreviation for seconds, which is the unit for time, and a kilogram is the unit for mass, and the abbreviation is it's all lowercase kg. Take note of whether your abbreviations are uppercase or lowercase. It is important to get it correct. Okay, moving on. Very well done for those units. If you are, uh, if you wish to go over and revise units, then look at the link below uh, in the description below the YouTube video. Okay, large and small numbers. Sometimes uh, when we measure something using the standard SI units, we end up with a very, very large or a very, very small number. Scientists are often investigating things which are very, very, very large or very, very, very small. And that means the numbers become quite difficult to use and um, to manipulate and to use. As an example, uh, the mass of the Earth in kilograms, you might not ever have thought about it, but it's going to be quite important if, we're an ast if we are uh, an astronomer and we are wondering about uh, the Earth's size of the Earth's gravitational field, for example. We're going to want to know what the Earth's mass is in kilograms. The, nu the size of a nucleus of an atom is obviously going to be very, very small or the distance from the sun to Pluto in meters is going to be a huge number, which would be difficult for us to use. For example, mass of Earth. Can you say that number, any of you? I would struggle. Uh, I would struggle a lot. It is six followed by 24, I believe, zeros, and then kilograms. Six zero 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 twenty four zeros kilograms. A very very large number. An example of a small number: mass of a hydrogen atom, zero point zero 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 zero. There are twenty seven zeros there. One six seven kilograms. Note the unit for both is kilograms. However, one of these is very very large, and one is very very small. The human brain is not very good at understanding numbers which are that large. It's much better if we can convert them to a different form, which is easier for us to understand, easiest for us to visualize. 
And just one more example there. The distance from the sun to Pluto. Here we go. A scientist and astronomer may be interested in looking at the orbit of Pluto around the sun. Pluto has a highly elliptical orbit. What does that mean? An elliptical or an ellipse is just a circle which you've squashed. So you can see Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, these have largely circular orbits around the sun. Um, they're drawn in perspective here. Pluto, on the other hand, is, is you, so if you've taken its circular orbit and squashed it into an ellipse. So it's much longer at one side than it is at the other. Um, so when it is, um, when Pluto is, for example, here, it's going to be much closer to the sun than when it's out here. The distance from the sun to Pluto varies from this number. Can you say it? I can say it, but that's only because I've been looking at it for a while and practicing it. It is 4.4 trillion meters at its closest point. So that's going to be about here to 7.3 trillion meters at its furthest point. Again, difficult for us to look at those numbers. Wouldn't it be great if we had some way to make them smaller, to make them more manageable? We do. One of the ways to do that is called standard form. OK, scientists have developed with mathematicians a system for writing large and small numbers in a shortened way. And it's called standard form. It comes in two parts. Uh, don't be afraid. It's quite simple once we've seen it. Uh, and done a couple of examples. There are two parts to it, a number in standard form, that is a number between 1 and 10, and a multiplication of that number by a power of 10. What do we mean by that? Let's find out. That Pluto example, here we go. So the distance from the Sun to Pluto varies from this number, 4.4 trillion meters, to 7.3 trillion meters. Here are those numbers in standard form. You can see the two parts that they're made up of. One number between 1 and 10, 4.4 in this case, multiplied by a power of 10. This is 10 to the power 12. And uh, 7.3 trillion, we can write 7.3, sorry, 730 followed by uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 zeros, we can write as 7.3 multiplied by 10 to the 12 meters. That's a number between 1 and 10 and a multiple of 10 or power of 10. What is a power of 10? Uh, you may have done this in maths and the rest of this lesson is going to be a bit of maths but very important maths for physics. If you haven't seen powers of 10 before, you may find this very helpful. So standard form uses the fact that decimal place value system is based on powers of 10. 10 to the raised to the power 0, which we write like this, 10 with a little 0, is equal to 1. 10 to the power 1 is equal to 10. 10 raised to the power 2, which is 10 with an uppercase 2, is 10 times 10, which is 100. 10 times 100. 10 to the power 3 is 10 times 10 times 10, 1,000. 10 raised to the power 4 is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is 10,000 and so on. OK, we can use this to go as, as high as we want. Notice that 10 to the power 4 is a 1 followed by four zeros. 10 to the power 3 is a 1 followed by three zeros, 1,000. This may be useful to us later. Here's an example. OK, we're going to we're going to do some some of our own. You're going to do some of your own work very shortly. As an example, write 50,000 in standard form. We need to split it up into a number between 1 and 10 and a power of 10. So 50,000 can be written as 5 multiplied by 10,000. If you don't believe me, do the maths. OK, 5 times 10,000 is equal to 50,000. Put it into your calculator and you'll see that, that is true. 10,000 in powers of 10 is the same as uh, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10 to the power 4. To make this easier, 
can count the zeros. One, two, three, four. There are four zeros there, so it's 10 to the power of 4. So, we can write 50,000 as 5 times 10 to the power of 4. This is 50,000 in standard form. Now it's your turn. Do exactly the same operation, but this time with 800,000. Give it a go. Don't worry if you try it and you cannot do it. I will go through the answer afterwards. I would like you to pause this and give it a go. Pause it now. Okay, let's see if you got it right. If you haven't done it yet, pause it right now and now give it a go. Okay, let's see. Otherwise, the answer is 8 times 10 to the power 5. How do we get there? Let's have a look. If you got that right, give yourself a pat on the back. Very well done. Explanation. 800,000 can be written as 8 times by 100,000. 8 times 100,000 is going to be 800,000. This makes sense. This is our number between 1 and 10 and our power of 10. 100,000 is the same as, or can be written as, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. F 10 to the power of 5, 5 tens. So 100,000 is the same as 10 to the power of 5. We've got five zeros after the 1, 10 to the power of 5. Therefore, 800,000 is 8 times 10 to the power of 5 in standard form. Okay, now we've, we're kind of, we're getting there. There is a once, you, you can do this the long way that we've just shown um, and work this out each time. And maybe for your first few, you will have to do it like that. However, we can quite quickly see how we can shorten this process um, and simplify it and do it much quicker. Um, we can do this by counting the digits uh, after the first digit uh, between it and the unit column. Okay, so the unit column, I didn't know this until today when I was researching this lesson because I had to look up some maths, but the unit column is this column here. For 300, uh, sorry, for 3 million, this number here, the unit column is the ones column. It's this column here. This column of numbers is the tens, this is the hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions. The unit column is this one. So we can look at how many places the first digit of our number is away from the unit column. In this case, 3 million, it's six places away. This is a unit column, one place, two place, three place, four place, five place, six places away. Because it's six places away from the units column, we can write 3 million as 3 times 10 to the power 6. Much quicker than writing it out in the long way that we did in the last slide. Likewise, 36,000, we can write as 3.6. Remember the number has to be between 1 and 10, so 3.6, multiplied by 10 to the 4, because 3 is 4 places away from the units column. This 3, the first digit, if we look at our units column here, how many places is away? 1, 2, 3, 4 places away. Okay, we're now going to see how to use standard form for very small numbers, and then we're going to do some examples. You're going to do some examples. I've got, we've got another couple of worked ones, and then you're going to do some examples. So for small numbers, we need to look at negative powers of 10. So we saw for the positive powers of 10, we also had 10 to the power 0, which is equal to 1. 10 to the power minus 1 is the same as 1 divided by 10, which is 0 0.1. 10 to the power minus 2 is equal to 0 0.01. It's the same, it's, it's the same operation as 1 divided by 10 to the power 2. 10 to the power 2 is 100. 1 divided by 100 is 0 0.01. 10 to the power minus 3 is equal to 0 0.001. 10 to the power minus 4 is 0 0.0001. 
Now don't worry if you don't understand the mathematical operation here. We can quickly get our power of 1 by or our power of 10 by simply looking at the number and then counting, look, looking at the number that the 10 is raised to. So for example, for 10 to the power minus 4, the number is 4. And then look at the number of zeros in our uh, power of 10 number. There are four zeros. 10 to the power minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. Because it's a minus, we're going below 1. Notice that the negative power does not mean that the number is negative. It means we've gone from multiplying by 10 to dividing by 10. Okay, example of a small number. Write 0 0.005 in standard form. Remember, we need to have uh, the standard forms in two parts. One is the number between 1 and 10, and one is a power of 10. 0 0.005 can be written as 5 multiplied by 0 0.001. 5 times 0 0.001 is equal to 0 0.005. If you don't believe me, type it into your calculator and you will see that it's the case. 0 0.001 is equal to 1 divided by 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is equal to 10 raised to the power 4. If you're unsure, you can look back at the last slide, or you can see, look, if you count up the zeros here, 0 0.0001, 10 to the power minus 4. 4 zeros minus 4. So, 0 0.005 is equal to 5 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 4. Question for you. What is 0 0.000009 in standard form? I'd like to pause the video and give it a go. You can pause the video now. Okay, let's go through the answer. Hopefully you got it right. If you got... 9 times 10 to the power minus 6. Give yourself a tip. Count the zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we can do that in a quick way. What's the explanation? Sorry. Explanation 0 0.00009 can be written as 9 multiplied by 0 0.00001. 0 0.00001 is equal to 10 divided by 10. 1 divided by 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 6 tens. So 0 0.00001 is equal to 10 times to the power minus 6. So 0 0.000009 is equal to 9 times 10 to the power minus 6. As you can see, it becomes quite tiring having to say very large or very small numbers in their normal form, because you end up saying lots and lots of zeros. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Scientists ultimately are quite lazy, so they don't want to say all these zeros all the time, which is why we've invented standard form, so we don't have to say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I can just say 10 to the power 6, 9 times 10 to the power minus 6. Okay. Uh, we can simplify the small numbers as well by looking at uh, the first non-zero digit compared to the units column. It's exactly the same as we did for the large numbers as for the small numbers. Look at this example. Here we've got 0 0.03. How many places is the 3, the first non-zero digit, that is the 3 in this case, how many places is it away from the units column? The units column is the first column on the left of the decimal point, this plot column. So how many places is it away? One, two. It's two places away. So if we change it into standard form, we can do it in one step. We can say 0 0.03 is equal to 3 times 10 to the minus 2, because the 3 is two places away from the units column. Count the zeros. Same exercise, 0 0.000039 is equal to 3.9 times 10 to the minus 5, because the 3, you can ignore the 9 for now, the 3 is 5 places away from the units column. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3.9 times 10 to the minus 5. Final step, final thing we're going to do this lesson, uh, final piece of new information, is taking these, is, is changing these standard form numbers back into ordinary numbers. 
To do this, simply multiply out. So, for example, 1.34 times 10 to the minus 3 in normal numbers or ordinary numbers is 1,340. Why? Because 1.34 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10 raised to the power of 3, is equal to 1,340. It's another example. 4.78 times 10 to the power of minus 3 is 0 0.0478 because uh, if we look up what 10 to the power minus 3 is, we shall see it's 0 0.001 minus 3, three zeros. Multiply those together and you get 0 0.00478. Your turn. I'd like you to write the following as ordinary numbers. You can pause the video. I'd like you to pause it and give it a go, and then I'll go through the answers. You can pause the video now. Have you unpaused it? Good. No cheating? Good. Okay, let's go through the answers. Uh, 2.99 times 10 to the 7. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to say. Uh, if you managed it, very well done. If you didn't manage it, this might help you out a lot. I don't want to cut and change the video and stuff because it's taking a while, so I'm just going to give you the hint now. If you're looking at your scientific calculator um, and you want to write a power of 10, you might need to use the ex you'll need to use the exponent key on your calculator to write a power of 10. It's the same key on a scientific calculator as it is on a scientific calculator on a mobile phone. So if you're looking at your mobile phone, the key will look the same. It's uh, usually uh, an X with a little superscript, uh, that means a little small one raised up behind it, uh, next to it, uh, Y, like that. So to write um, 2.99 times 10 to the power 7, you would type in in your calculator 2.99 multiplied by 10, write in the letter 10, then press the exponent key and then press 7, and then it will do that calculation for you automatically. Play around with it, make sure you're comfortable with it. Anyway, here are the answers. 29.9 million and 0 0.000000136. If you're, um, you can do, you can do it without a calculator, simply by moving the decimal place seven points to the left. If, uh, sorry, seven points to the right if it's 10 to the power 7, or 7 points to the left if it's 10 to the power minus 7. Okay, a little bit more practice, and then it'll be the end of our lesson. We're almost there. Well done if you've made it this far. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Just that we can speed that process up by considering where the first digit is compared to the units column. So, for example, it's just like in our um, previous examples, we're counting zeros. So if we have 3.51 times 10 to the 5, uh, we're going to need five digits uh, between the first digit and the units column. So 3.51 times 10 to the 5 is going to become three digit, 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 five digits. So it's going to come 351000 zero, zero, zero. because the 3, as it says here, because the 3 moves 5 places away from the units column. Two places are filled by 5 and 1, but 0 is in the other 3 places. 3.08 times 10 to the minus 4 is equal to 0 0.000308 because the 3 moves 4 places away from the units column. It's here in the units column and it moves 4 places away. So we need 4 zeros. Put zeros in the other places, focus on the 3, not the 8. Okay, your turn for a bit more work. Have a go at these. Um, if you're stuck, look back through the examples. I've also included a link at the bottom uh, underneath the YouTube for help with standard form if you still don't understand. I'm not a maths teacher, uh, so this is one of my first maths-ish type lessons. So if I'm struggling and you don't understand it, uh, I'm not surprised have a look at the link below um, below the YouTube for standard form. But give this a go, and uh, we'll go through the answers right afterwards. So I'd like you to 
when I say pause the video and give it a go. You can pause the video now. Okay, hopefully you've managed that. Um, so I wanted you to convert these normal numbers into standard form. Here are your answers. Height of a skyscraper is 3 times 10 to the 2 metres. Height length of a virus, 3 times 10 to the minus 7 metres. Size of a galaxy, 3 times 10 to the 20 metres. Height of a mountain, 3 times 10 to the 3. Nucleus of an atom is about 3 times 10 to the minus 15 metres. And these are your final questions. That's it. You've made it to the end of the lesson. If you've made it this far, very well done. I appreciate that maths can be somewhat dry. However, we need we need to be comfortable with uh, with quite a, with maths for um, for science. So it's critical importance. Exit ticket. What I'd like you to do and submit to Shoby. Uh, thanks very much for those who have submitted the work for last week. The task is still live uh, as of the fifth uh, of May, which we're in now. Um, so. Yes, answer these exit ticket questions and submit it to show B. What is a unit? Why do we need units? Number two, what does SI stand for? What is the SI unit for length, for mass and for force? Number three, why might scientists prefer to use SI units compared to other units like imperial units would be miles and um, pounds and things. Why do we use SI in science? Go back to the video if you're not sure. Number four, rewrite the following numbers in standard form. A, B, C, D. And number five, rewrite the following standard form numbers as ordinary numbers. Okay, you can submit your answers to showbe.com using this class code here. Um, just as a final hint, if you are typing your answers on a word processor, I think the word processing on Shobi is not incredible, so it may not allow you to write a superscript. What do I mean by a superscript? A superscript is, uh, see, down here if we've got 3.9 times 10 to the power 6, 10 raised to the power 6, you can see the 6 is small and raised above the 10, we call that a superscript. And sometimes it'll be difficult to write on a computer. Um, you can write it in a different way, which means exactly the same thing. You can write 3.9 times 10, this little hat symbol, 6. And that means the same thing. So you may like to use that for your answers. Looking forward to seeing how you get on. Um, if you've got any questions in the meantime, uh, you can email me uh, d.devlin at hasler.org. Okay, that's the end. That's the end of our lesson. Um, and uh, looking forward to seeing you again. Looking forward to seeing your answers and to seeing you again next week.